guys, it's Blanket here, and today I'm going to be doing a Cinema 4D tutorial on physics, MoGraph tags, and rigid body. So let's just open up Cinema 4D, and this is actually a little preview of what we're going to be making today. So, yeah. I use MoGraph text object because it's just faster and easier. You don't have to extrude the uh, do extrude nerves. So yeah, let's just type in tutorial, and then the font I used for the picture or the one before I used Transformers, and then let's just rotate it a little bit and put it in the center of our screen. Uh, Alright, that looks good. Scoot that over a little bit, and then we're going to want to add a floor. You can add a plane, but adding a floor is a little bit easier because you don't have to uh, resize it or anything. It just sizes itself to infinity. And now, since we have our text and our floor, all we need to do is select both of them, go to Tags, MoGraph Tags, Rigid Body. So now both of these have uh, are like okay for the tutorial the text each text is now its own object and can be affected by gravity and now the floor is now an actual object and the text will recognize that and bounce off of it so let's just do a little preview see what that looks like so the text is falling and then it bounces off the floor here we can actually see it bouncing let's get a good one of the floor alright Boom, and it bounces off. So now we need to, if you're going to do, you can do an intro and have the text fall. And then when you, uh, when it's like completed falling, you can do it upside down. And then you just have the text there or whatever you would like. So now let's find a frame that we like, how the text look when it bounces off. And that looks pretty good. It's just random and looks nice so let's render that out and see how it looks right now like it looks nice and all but I think it'd look a lot cooler if we had some walls and some lighting and a new material so uh, to add a material you double click in this little box and then double click on the thing that pops up and then we're gonna change the color to a nice blue that looks good and then uh, we'll go to reflection uh, keep everything default and where it says texture click on the arrow and go to Fresno and then I want it to be a little less black uh, here we can make this like a lighter gray no we want that to be black we want this to be Alright, well that looks good. Here, we'll move this up a little bit. Alright, that looks nice. So then you can either drag the material onto the text or onto the actual object. And we'll render that out and see what that looks before we add lighting and walls and all that good stuff. Alright, so for walls, I usually just add a cube and make the dimensions 5,000 by 5,000 by 5,000. And then I'm going to want to drag it in a little bit so that the wall is closer to the text. Not like completely touching it, but closer. And then we're going to want to drag this wall closer. And that looks good. Alright, so let's render that out and see what that does. And see, this wall is actually, since it's white from the default light, it's actually reflecting onto the text which gives it a nice effect so now what we're going to want to do is add an actual light and then we can just back this up back it up like right where the text is facing it and then drag it up so that it lights up the whole uh, floor and all the walls which looks nice let's render this out and it's a bit too bright so I think it will look nice with like the 
charcoal gray. So let's see what this looks like. And that looks nice. So I'm going to keep it like that. And we'll scoot it over a little bit. And then for render settings, that's what I'm going to go over next. We, you go, you click on render and scroll down to render settings. And for general, it should be full render. That's the default and that's what you want to keep it. For output, you want to change the width to 280 and the height to 720. After you do this, you will have to adjust the photo a little bit because it zooms it in a bit. And then you click on save and click on the three dots to save it where you want. And you would go tutorial text. Two. And let's see, you would want to make this JPEG unless you're gonna upload this into uh, into Photoshop. Then you would want it PNG, but I'm gonna keep it uh, JPEG. And then options, you know, 95% quality is great and all, but sometimes you just want the best quality there can be. So you just drag that up to 100 and click OK. And then keep everything, all this stuff default. You don't need to do Alpha Channel or any of that. Multi pass. Do not check, you don't need that. For anti-aliasing, you need to change this from geometry to best and keep it on still image. If you're doing an animation, obviously change it to animation and you don't really need to worry about these. So keep it on still image. And you can keep all this the same, but if you want the render time to go a little bit faster, you can change this to two by two. But I'm just gonna keep it four by four because render time is okay. And for options, the only thing you would need to change is auto light, but I like the way it looks, and uh, we'll just keep the auto light in there. So now we're going to need to add some effects to make it look smexy. So ambient occlusion is a really nice effect, and I like what it does to the photo. Well, it's not a photo, but animation. So then the other one that you're going to need is global illumination. And these two together make the sexiest quality with lighting and shadows it's amazing but you do need to know that it's gonna slow it down a lot it's gonna slow the render down a lot so when you're rendering a photo keep both of them if you're gonna render one take off global illumination so yeah now we'll render it out and when it's done rendering I'll come back to you guys Okay guys, so I'm back and the render is finished. So this is what we have. And as you can see, the shadowing is very nice and so is the lighting, how the light is reflecting off of all the letters. It looks very nice. I hope you guys like this tutorial and uh, if you have any suggestions or anything you want to know about Cinema 4D, uh, hit me up with a message or comment in the video. Comment, rate, subscribe.